what is going on guys welcome back to ranger central and today we're going to talk more still about game five last night because i still have so much to say i woke up feeling just numb honestly like i woke up feeling just terrible still about what i watched last night at msg like i just i'm still not over it there, there's just no way around it i'm still not over it which is why i'm gonna talk about it again before i get into everything leave a like of course on the video if you enjoy it subscribe if you guys are new especially if you're a rangers fan and turn on your notifications so you know when i upload or go live on the channel i have no structure to this either i just am gonna go with the flow and see what happens for all i know this is a terrible take here and it doesn't even get uploaded but i really just don't know how to feel to be honest with you because there's a rope internally pulling each direction. There's the rope inside of me that's saying this team has faced adversity throughout the season before, and they've found a way to get things done and win the President's Trophy and everything that we've seen them do so far this season and that they've been battle-tested and that, well, they won seven games in a row. All they got to do here is win one to move on to the ECF. But then there's the negative and the pessimism in me on that side of the rope pulling me towards this team's cooked you've seen the movie before you shouldn't have faith at all you're a dumbass if you do because at the end of the day like i said this is what it's been before and i just don't know which way of the rope i should be leaning towards myself at all it's the internal battle i'm having so i'm trying to find a way to sit in the middle here where the season's not done as much as i'm pissed off as much as last night was really terrible and i mean terrible i'm sitting here trying to find a way to feel in the middle that they do have to win one game at the end of the day where carolina has to get two done the problem is carolina has a game at home and so do the rangers but carolina the next game's in carolina and raleigh which is where my biggest concern is with the rangers winning a game there uh even though they did win game three still I'm just worried considering the momentum side of things. But I'm now at a spot where this team has to prove it for me to restore faith in them. I'm sorry, but if they don't win this in six at this point, I'm going to have a hard time personally, at the very least, rolling into the ECF feeling like this team's going to end up just taking care of business against Florida or if Boston comes back then maybe I'm feeling a little bit different but even then Boston then maybe gets some momentum rolling into that series but obviously we cross that bridge when we get there first they have to get to the ECF but remains to be seen of course but I'm sitting here trying to feel like all right let's <sighs> Let's see if they can restore my faith because if they don't win in six, if they can't win one on the road here and this comes back to the garden, it's going to be a lot of deja vu. Uh, I, I can tell you that. And if anything, it's going to feel worse because not only are they going to choke a 2 nothing lead, then potentially at that point, it could potentially be three. And even if they win in seven, the fact that you were up 3 nothing and this had to go seven, it's just not a good look. It's just not. I want to see desperation from this team, and that's where I'm saying they need to restore faith. As much as I was pissed at the quotes yesterday, they have to turn the page. As fans, we're allowed to be pissed. We're allowed to be vomiting. We're allowed to be disgusted with last night's performance for them. They have to find a way to turn the damn page and fast because Thursday's going to roll up very quickly on us, and they have to be prepared, and there better be a desperation level that we have not seen from this team in a very long time, if not ever. So that's what that's the first step. The second step, generate more than one high danger chance for crying out loud. If you look at Steve Valaket's chart, when that went up this morning, oh, I, I was puking on the side of my bed. I puked in my bed. I my eyes were bleeding. Terrible. One high danger chance. One expected goal that entire game. Disgraceful. And then Carolina was saying that like a 4.3, like near five expected goals with however many high danger chances. And like we talked about last night, they sat back way too much. You cannot allow Carolina to play their game. And I think I'm stating the obvious on that, but that's what they did last night. It has nothing to do with the fact that the Rangers have been struggling more at special teams, which, yeah, it does play a factor in the fact that the Rangers have not been 
you know, doing that lately. It does play a factor in them not winning, but they weren't going to win last night regardless if they converted on the power play once or twice. Even if they went perfect with the way Carolina played that game, they would have lost in overtime. There's just no way. They, they look pathetic on the power play, and that's another thing that does have to get fixed is the power play. I mean, there's just so many little things where that's why I feel that's where the side of the rope where I should be feeling doom and gloom is pulling me more is that what did I say after game three? I will only be worried if Carolina starts scoring, you know, creative goals and start scoring quality level goals. You're seeing that. My other worry now is coming in about the power play and them not converting. And now I have to worry that, all right, well, if they get a lead, is it safe? Because they sit back way too much when they shouldn't have been protecting a one goal lead with what, like a two period, a period and a half remaining, whatever you want to say. You cannot be sitting back for that long. Period and a half, I meant, by the way. But regardless, they sat back way too much. And that needs to change. And this is where Laviolette, too. Uh, I mean, he's got to make the adjustment. But at the end of the day, how much will it make a difference? Because right now, it is on the players. It's on them. Because we've seen it time and time again before. It is on the players to rise to the occasion. And show that they're different this year and that's the thing that sucks is that i put my faith in them after the four games against washington i was like all right I i'm impressed because you swept washington but that's what you were supposed to do so i wasn't fully moved i was like all right let's see them play a real team against carolina and see how things go but at least you know they took care of business against washington let's see how they roll into carolina into that Carolina series, and maybe that will make me feel different. You win the first three. I am cocky as all hell. I am arrogant as all hell. I am insufferable as all hell. And now I have to sit back and I'm humbled. And I have to look in the mirror, just like this team, and say, was I wrong for putting my full faith in them? Now they're at the point where they haven't lost me fully, but they have to prove they have to prove their worth again. And that's what sucks is that I bought in and I had my full faith and now I have to sit back and question if I should. So ju just, I I'm all over the place with this one. I know, but this is more just me giving you my raw emotion and spitballing here. I'm not here to give you a structured video, to be honest with you. If you were looking for that, I apologize eight minutes in that I'm kind of telling you that I'm not going structured, but I'm here to just spitball off what's on my mind, and that's why I'm even doing this, because this is therapeutic for me right now. But there needs to be a way better effort from the top six. I Again, I know I'm stating the obvious, but that Rosovic play on that first goal lives in my head. But in general... The biggest issue that I had last night, and it was mostly with the power play, but it was also 5v5. The puck support, or the lack thereof with puck support, was inexcusable. They were trying way too much to cheat for offense, and then if they weren't cheating for offense, they were sitting back way too much. Instead of playing the game simple and moving the puck up the ice with puck support, dumping it in, getting it on the forecheck, which the power play, that was more so the fact where it was dump and don't chase. And especially in the face-off dot, no puck support there whatsoever. You have the back check or the lack of back check from Panarin on that Kuznetsov goal. I mean, there are just so many little details you could point at in last night's game and ask yourself, why? Uh, like, how, how does this even happen? For a team that was up 3-0... And you thought was determined this year. It's just you question how these little details get missed like that. But the biggest adjustment that has to be made is obviously the puck support and the forecheck in general. They have to be forechecking a lot better. 
And then I do want to see a lineup change. I, and I'm not the biggest guy of saying a lineup change isn't an adjustment, but there's got to be a lineup change. I'm sorry. I know the second line's been good for you all year. It's time to make a slight change. And I said it in the post game last night, if you did not watch it. I think move Lafreniere on that top line right wing to take Rosovic's spot and then put Phil Pedal on the second line if he's ready to go. Play him with uh, Panarin and Trocek. Maybe add a bit of offense there. Rosovic, I don't know what you do with him. Maybe put him on the third line and then move Cooley down to the fourth line. And I would like to see Edstrom in there, but that's probably not going to happen over VC. I'd like to see that. Probably not going to happen. But... That's the lineup I would like to see. And then I'd like to also see Jones get in there for Gustafson, but it's never going to happen. The only way a significant lineup change, I think, happens is if this goes seven at this point. So the adjustment's going to have to come with the system, and the adjustment's going to have to come from Peter Laviolette, and he's going to have to get the group to buy into that adjustment, which is for checking better, better puck support. If, uh, if I'm Laviolette, all I'm doing is rolling the film of the first three games, especially game Game one, especially game one, roll the film, roll it. And somebody made a comment in the post game, forgot who, sorry to you, but I'd shout you out otherwise, that it felt a lot like that one to nothing game in Carolina during the regular season where they got a lead and they thought, all right, we could just sit back all willy nilly and grab the win. And they were able to do it that game this time. No. And then there was also that speculation. I don't know how true it is. Apparently, Mike Pekka was the one that said that they should sit back and play defensively to protect that lead. If that's the case, Lavi let's got to step in and say, don't listen to this fool. Obviously not say that, but don't, don't sit back. You can't do that. Because we've seen it during the AV era with our own two eyeballs that that just can't happen. You cannot sit back and get complacent. And that's where this team has to show again that they're not complacent and that they're going to go full throttle and bend them over in game six. And if not, then we're coming back to the garden for a game seven. And at that point, I don't even know what I'm going to say because I would honestly just be disgusted at that point. I already am, but a game seven would really be the nail in the coffin for me just being fully disgusted with this team unless they somehow win it and the win game seven and somehow end up making it to the finals and winning it all then all is forgiven we don't care we're all fat and happy and we don't care anymore uh and we can look back and laugh at ourselves for feeling this way but for right now there's a feeling between especially internally in my head where there's a rope pulling me and this is where I get to you guys and I want to know how you're feeling because I need this to be a community uh, therapy session here. I need this to be a... I, I need everyone to... If, for, if you're feeling good, I want you to help me... Pull me off the ledge here. I know that I'm supposed to be doing that here as the one making these videos and stuff where I'm supposed to be pulling fans off the ledge. I, I'm counting on you guys. Pull me off the ledge here and make me lean towards the rope to have faith. But if you're on the other side of the rope where you're feeling down and you feel like that this team's going to inevitably just implode in front of our own eyes, I want to know why you feel that way. And just help me get answers because right now I know I'm supposed to be giving the answers like I said before. I got nothing, and that's why I. this is just more of a rambling session and a yapping session more than an actual YouTube video. This is just my version of therapy right now where I need to get what's on my mind off of it because I just can't sit here all day and just... I can't sit on my feelings right now. I just... <sighs> Whatever. I'm yapping too much. I'm done yapping. But there needs to be big changes in the system. There needs to be a there needs to be a hunger in this team. And I know I'm stating the obvious, like I said before, but they have this game to really restore my full faith. Um if they do not win game six and this goes seven, 
I'm just going to sit here and even if they win that game seven, feel cautiously optimistic the rest of the way through until they give me a reason not to. But that is going to be it for me. Let me know all your thoughts in the comments. Leave a like if you enjoyed. Subscribe if you guys are new, especially if you're Ranger fans. Turn on your notifications so you know I upload or go live next. Thank you if you did listen to this 15-minute yapping session. But I will see you guys in the next one.